Today, um, we are debating um, citizens' arrest. So what I was saying is historically, citizens' arrests haven't served Black people. What has happened is, um, you think about Ahmaud Arbery, you think about Trayvon Martin. What we know is that um, Black people are often the victims of citizens' arrests. Um, so the conversation is really just about why is there a law on the books that allows for white people to be vigilantes? That is my read on it. As a lawyer, I believe that there are laws written since the Constitution um, that serve white interests and treat us as three-fifths. So that is my frame. I am arguing against citizens' arrests. If we can get blasphemous debates and his headphones to work, he will, de he will, de he will be debating um, in favor of citizens' arrest. So let's give this one more go. They all be trolling. Um, let's give this one more try. This is say word. Here we go. Let's go. So your position is that you do support citizens' arrest. What's your argument? I, I mean, I just think citizens' arrest, like any other arrest, there's outcomes that are bad outcomes from bad people. But I think completely getting getting rid of it altogether is just it, it, it could it could like be like it could it could hurt you in a situation where like there is something going on and like it, I think like in a, like yeah if, if somebody's breaking in your house or something like that if somebody's like do breaking in all these houses and then you, you get yours and you have a chance and you're like you can stop it then I think like then you under the law if it was just if that was like canceled out then it's like there like that you wouldn't be able to do that you would get in trouble for that I think p killing people is bad but I think pointing out these these people specifically and saying, putting that under citizen arrest, citizen, citizen's arrest, I, I don't necessarily agree with that because I don't even think that's citizen's arrest. I think that's just like m like murder. But if you're actually doing a citizen's arrest, I think it could, could like, I think, it, I think it's good. Okay, so what I think is important for us to do is let's take a step back. So I want to define what a citizen's arrest is. A citizen's, a citizen's arrest it is, a, is an arrest made by someone that is not a police officer or sworn, sworn in law enforcement official, um, to mm. the point. So it does not automatically mean that you can kill someone, no. But what I'm saying is that it gives people um, something to hide behind, a cloak to hide behind, that too often results in our physical harm or our death. And so what you have, um, and, I'll, and I will start with this example, do you know the history of law enforcement in this country? Yeah. So what's what's your read on the history of law enforcement? Like where did where did police officer law enforcement actions occur and begin? Where did they begin? Catching catching slaves. Yeah, slave catching. And so if we know that the history of law enforcement in this country is literally chasing fugitive slaves, fugitive people who were enslaved, then the very basis of um, the legal system is flawed because it was never meant to serve us. It was meant to catch us. And so even when people are un acting under the cloak of, um, I am doing something to benefit the law, I am neighborhood watch, I am a vigilante who's, who's chasing down Amon Arbery because he's entering this property that other white people have entered, the flaw is I am catching this human being who I deem as less than human. And that is a system that will never serve us properly and will likely result in our harm and death. Now, that said, I'm not saying that a human being, if they feel threatened, a human being, if they feel like their property is at risk, a human being, if they feel that someone else who they're witnessing is at risk, that they can't call the police. But them deciding that they themselves are the law or above the law is going to result in harm for us. But I mean, why, why, like, why, even like with the history and stuff, so if, if the whole system is wrong, why stop at citizens' arrest? Why not? If it's just like a security rent a cop, like uh, Mike Epps off uh, next Friday after next, whatever, like, can he stop somebody if it's if it's a regular Friday security after guard? Next. Hey, that's yeah, that's it. It's Friday's the best movie of all time. So, I, I mean, yeah. look, I'm with you on Friday, but you hit Friday after next, like a rent a cop, like Friday after next, but I'm with you. Okay, yeah, so, all right. If, so if citizens is a restaurant, then is a rent a cop. Or stopping somebody who's who not all the way trained like a cop is 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 
a, a better like level higher level security wrong is uh, for stopping somebody is a bouncer wrong for stopping somebody is a cop wrong is, is arresting people wrong for like is it just wrong should you not be able to arrest people because some cops kill people and well, I, mean, I think, if you're I think saying, that's beyond the scope of this argument um but i think that us having a thorough examination you took, of, you took it there you took it there by saying the history of, of well policing. i think that so history I, is important because the history came from people who were acting as vigilantes right mm -hmm. so my only point is that the citizen's arrest gives people to act as if this was the very basis of the thing. This is how it started. So me saying that, you know, the legal system in and of itself is flawed is not me saying nobody, that police officers shouldn't be able to arrest someone. We may disagree on what people should be able or what police should be able to do after that arrest occurs, right? But I am saying that we have to examine where these laws were born out of because they were born out of prejudice and systemic oppression and racism. If that is indeed the case, which I think that we both acknowledge is the case, we have to reshape the legal system, reshape the laws so they better serve us. Probably with our opinions and our experiences and our backgrounds and our framing in mind, because then it results in a law that doesn't, um, take into account what they call color blindness, which is really the erasure of black people. Yeah, but I mean, it, it's st it's still gonna hurt us either way it goes, because if, if they ban that, it's like if it's illegal to do that, then if there's a case where somebody did break into somebody's house and then it's a black guy chasing a white dude, then it's gonna, I feel like that he's gonna get punished way like way more. So it's like, if, if that's gone, I feel like we're gonna be hurt on either side of it, but- Well, let me, let me, bond, let me give you an example bond. of how we're hurt even with them. Um, it's not a citizen's arrest, but there were police officers who um, broke into a home um, just recently. Um, they killed a woman by the name of Breonna Taylor in Louisville, Kentucky, and her boyfriend mm -hmm. shot back and was incarcerated until the other day because there was a public outcry from us saying, we're not safe in our own homes. And when we protect our property and our homes and our bodies the same way that y'all do, we are charged and in jail. Right. And so I think that um, and someone raised a good point that it does appear that um, some aspects of your argument are muddling citizens arrest with self-defense. Right. Um, citizens no, arrest not, not. with the castle doctrine, citizens arrest, even with staying your ground, which I would also argue does not work for us. We're not allowed citizens to arrest. I'm, I'm not I'm not comparing it to self-defense because self okay. citizens arrest. They can be on the way out. They can be running away. Are you you're, are you familiar with the one Tay Diggs? Uh, uh, singer, uh, uh, actor, songwriter, Tay Diggs. Um, are you familiar with the incident in January of 2013 when somebody broke into his uh, house and he seen him rummaging through his garage and then he chased the dude down and uh, and then that dude like broke his ankle and stuff like that. Like that, that's no, that's not self defense. That's that's citizens arrest. But I, I would agree with. So I I, I think you take him down. So it's not like I didn't. It's, it's, I, it's, I'm not aware of that case. But what I would tell you is I still think it's a little different because. Tay Diggs was on his property. There's something called castle doctrine that most states have that allows people to protect their domain. And there was a, there was a shift um, a few years ago because of the American Legislative Exchange Council that moved the castle doctrine to stand your ground, which allows you to not just protect your immediate property, but allows you to subjectively decide if you're in fear that you can use deadly force against a human being because you just are subjectively in fear. That's very different from a castle doctrine where you're protecting your property, right? Well, the, the castle doctrine sounds a lot more LL Cool J than, than Tay Diggs because LL Cool J, he beat him up in his house. Tay Diggs chased him down the street. That's, he that's he the chased doctrine. him down the street because they were what? On his property. So, it's, so the Castle Doctrine covers the whole world? Like, if you can, you can chase them, you can get on a plane? Like, how far does it go? No, sir. Castle Doctrine is in response to someone feeling like their property, their personal, their, their property, their real property is um, being uh, je jeopardized in some way. You are allowed to use force when your property is threatened. If someone tries to enter your home or onto your property, you are allowed to respond and, and protect yourself. That is the castle doctrine. Stay in your ground. And chase them as far as you want. I'm sorry. Like chase, you could chase them as far as you want. Like in, like get in the car, like run, chase them through traffic, all that. I don't the know castle about, doctrine. I think it probably depends on what each state law requires and allows. Like in some states, like I was just explaining to you, stand your ground substantially expanded castle doctrine to do all kinds of crazy shit that doesn't serve us, just like citizens arrest don't. 
But what I'm saying is it really depends on what the state allows, right? And I'm telling you that Castle Doctrine, if Tay Diggs was responding to someone on his real property, he is allowed to pursue whatever, whoever the suspect is to defend his real property. That is still different than a citizen's arrest. It's, it, uh, it seems pretty citizen's arresty to me, but yeah, I, 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 I'll have to get up on my castle doctrine. Uh, yeah, it depends uh, on the state, right? So I don't know where Tay Diggs was when this happened. This is the first I'm hearing um, about it from 2013, but it depends on the state because there are different nuances that states state law has. They're I, not it's not I, the same I, everywhere. I just think most of this is like anecdotal stories of this this guy, did, this bad person killed, like these racist people killed people. Like, so these this happened, this happened, specific like instances, but I think we should be able to just in court, like, m no, this is right and this is wrong. I don't think we need to say you shouldn't be able to do, be, do the rent-a-cop thing and, and catch somebody doing something, a real crime without murdering them. I think, I don't think it needs to be, we get rid of this law. I think we, it's something that could be good. If somebody's doing something that's clearly bad and you're not just in your truck chasing them down, recording them and doing like some KKK stuff type of stuff, then... And, in court, you should be able to like just know with like normal any kind of normal ethics or morals that like, this is wrong. And but like to say we need to get rid of that law, like most of the laws are are not to benefit black people. But that one specifically, I I don't think I think if we get rid of it, it's gonna it's gonna hurt us. So like it like because then it's gonna be more cases for us where it's if we're trying to like use that, then it's like oh then then it's we're gonna get tried for that. Oh, uh, I don't know. I, I just, I just, I would be interested to see. I don't have this, but I would be interested to see the data where Black people are relying on the fact that they engaged in a citizen's arrest. I would say, and I know that we're not monolithic, but I would say more often than not, Black people are not engaging in citizen's arrest because they're like, I'm not in my business. It's white folks that decide that you look criminal or I look criminal and they need to be in hot pursuit of us, right? Like, I don't think that's something that we normally would rely on. Like, oh, yeah, I'm. This person over here looks suspicious. Let me go and hunt them down. Like, we don't do that. So I don't think it serves us one way or the other. Um, I mean, I feel like white people are going to find white loopholes regardless. So I think getting rid of this, it, it, <laughs> I'm saying, but get, getting rid of this, I feel like it's not going to, it's not going to, it's not going to hurt white people at any kind of significant percentage. Like there's going to be some other kind of white loophole that they use. But I think it, it could hurt the small small percentage of Black people who are using that. Who is using it? Uh, have you heard of any recent case where someone was using citizen's arrest as a defense? Tay Diggs in 2013. Okay. And aside from the Tay Diggs, because I told you, again, that's more castle doctrine than citizen's arrest. What's the, what he was, can you say it was at his property, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's different. That's castle doctrine. So what, besides the Tay Diggs 2013, do you have another example where Black people are using that? Because I haven't heard my, that. My homeboy, Jamal. What happened with Jamal? Um, it was this dude um, that had, uh, he, ro he, he robbed the liquor store. And then Jamal was like, bro, you can't do that. And then you know, it was a white dude. And he started running away. And then Jamal uh, had tackled him. And then and then uh, he was like, uh, I was using the citizen's arrest method. And then, uh, and then he you got You sound like you're making this up. No, nah, Jam nah, Jamal's my homeboy. We go like way, 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 way back. <laughs> What's Jamal's last name? Uh, Tompkins. I'm going to look this up. <laughs> I'm going to look this up. I'm going to look right. this up. He's in, he's, in, he's in my profile picture. He is? Like, we, like, it's, like, it's, nah. <laughs> you making nah, this man. up. Fake yeah. news. Okay, well, this has been fun. Um, Tell your boy J Jamal Tompkins. We said, What's up? I hope this right. case worked out for him, but I do appreciate you coming on. Look up Castle Doctrine. I think you'll feel what I'm All saying. Right. I really appreciate you having me. I'm I'm a huge fan a fan of yours. Thank I you. made up this whole argument. I just want to I just want to I just want to uh, to be able to talk to you and debate you. But uh, yeah, I'm a huge fan. And you you are my sister's uh, show. She's uh, lawyer based, so I just appreciate you supporting oh, them. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that was. She was one of them. not the one that interviewed, not the one that interviewed you, but the one that was like on the bottom screen. Like, the one like, who got off right of before I started. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Just well, appreciate talk, you. Talk Everything you doing. You know. Talk to your lawyer, your sister lawyer, about this, and she gonna be on my side. But thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you know. You know. All right. Thanks. Take care. Bye. All right, right y'all. Um. Well. <laughs>